good. All righty. And I'm going to start the live. Okay. All right. Well, welcome. It's the February 23rd, 24th uh, Asia Pacific Chaos Community Call. It's been a while. It has. To see everybody. So it's good to see all of you. I know I've seen some of you on some of the different calls, like the metrics models call, but nonetheless, it's good to be here on this call today. Uh, so uh, there's an agenda here. I thought we could kind of work through it and maybe get your feedback. And of course, feel free to add things. But I think this first meeting is just to kind of get us back into the rhythm of meeting again for this Asia Pacific call 2022. Um, to give you some updates on 2022 things that we've been talking about in the chaos project as a whole. One is that we're doing a website redesign in over the course of spring and summer so we kind of think that our content has gotten it's it's spread out a little bit and i think we need to to work to get that a little bit more consistent across the chaos project uh this is just something that's been kind of interesting to me as an open source project in general that is you have uh people working in different spots of the project being very deliberate about <laughs> how that information gets developed in the different spots of a project is it's complex um and i think after five years it's time that we <laughs> we kind of reflect on on that um so across like our github repositories our website um i don't know we have a bunch of google drive folders all that kind of stuff we're really working to make the website a single source of truth for the chaos project and I thought maybe I was just thinking this morning that perhaps this is a, a would be a good time for us to include uh, a Chinese component or, or Chinese information on the website uh, that could be useful to the community because we haven't really done that. You know what I mean? We have like a link to the Chinese meetups. We have a link to um, the translated metrics pages. You know what I mean? But they're all kind of buried in the website. So I don't know what people's thoughts are on that, but it's something that I'd be happy to, to talk through. Yeah, I, I'm well, getting the impression wide and far that we do need to, or everybody needs to organize and make their documentation more accessible, the chaos project, as well as the two software components of it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, it's related to the knowledge base we discussed earlier. In yes. the metrics model meeting. Okay. Yes. Yeah, this would be related to that. So I mean, yes. So the idea is that we have a knowledge base that would provide access to the metrics models, like you mentioned, Yahui. And we'd also have a knowledge base that would provide access to the um, community handbook. And the community mm -hmm. handbook really we'd rely on that to really specify how work gets done in the chaos project. Elizabeth, I think I have that right, don't I? Kind of the two things that we'd focus on. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because the, uh, after that meeting, I, I was thinking about the knowledge base. So uh, we do need an, any kind of knowledge base to contain the documentation because we have a lot of documentation spread every, everywhere, not just on the website, but also on the GitHub uh, and uh, some, somewhere else. But uh, I'm, I'm also thinking if we are talking about uh, the knowledge base, uh, I think we're still missing one component for the for the community. It's about forum, so uh, so we can we can set up forum on on this website to to uh, get people together to to discuss the things we are interested in. Yes, we have some like, but uh, the like the topic on the like is kind of hard to to track for for the specific one. If we have a, a forum. To, to to let people talking about some some hot topic and we can re record this uh, this result of the discussion and anyone else uh, could uh, follow that discussion if uh, 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 after afterwards and uh, and also if they are looking for some um, a, some useful information and uh, they may can search in some good discussion results from this forum. That's the idea I'm, I'm thinking about earlier. Okay. 
I got that in there. Elizabeth, did you have a comment? Yeah, I would also just plus one that and say that Slack, uh, our version of Slack does not save messages past a certain time. So if there was a discussion that happened a while back, we won't know it's gone. Um, and also um, there are, it's so, because there's so many different channels, I guess, in Slack that, like we were talking about the knowledge base in the common working group, but that doesn't, like no one else can see that unless you're in that. So I would yeah. just like to plus one Yehoi's suggestion. Maybe even instead of the mailing list, I don't want to get wild, but you know. We've, yeah, <laughs> we've talked about this before. And my, yeah. here's, here's my take on, on forums and mailing lists mm -hmm. is that you really, you really have to pick one because if you allow discussions in forums, there are people who love forums and they will uh. have all of their discussions in the forums. And then you have the people that love mailing lists and they'll have all of their discussions on the mailing lists. And the two just never talk to each other. So then you end up with two parallel lines of communication within the project. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have no problem with using forums, but I do think Elizabeth, you're right. If we decide to use a forum, I think it should be instead of the mailing list. And that's a decision we kind of need to make um, project-wide because forums and mailing lists kind of serve the same purpose, right? It's for those longer term threaded discussions, it's decisions about the project. It's that sort of thing. And, and I, I fear that having two, you just end up with parallel discussions. I'm, I'm trying to, Matt, you and I are both on a open source forum, Sustain, I think. That Sustain both e a forum. They, they yeah. do both the forum and the forum gets emailed to me as well. And I don't know if that's something I signed up for, but I find it helpful to get the emails from the forum um, because then I can keep up with it. And I, I don't have to remember to go to the forum because, <clears throat> so Don, have you seen that work outside? I mean, it seems to work for sustain. <clears throat> yeah, that, that works because the, the source of truth is still the forum. So you still only have one. You don't have a separate mailing list. I mean, you can get forum notifications um, via, you email. know, via email. And that's, that's what, honestly, that's what I tend to do. Um, when I participate in open source projects that have forums, like, like open search, for example, um, the AWS open source project that, um, they use forums for their discussion. They don't have a mailing list. I don't think as far as I know, um, I don't think they even have really an official Slack channel. I think it's really all done on the forum. Um, yeah, the but Slack. yeah, you, you can get notifications via, via email, which, which works great for the forums, but I just don't think you can have a mailing list, which is completely separate from the forum. Yeah, I, I second that as a reality of how these things work. Because I, I used to using some forum provided by the, uh, I mean, the commercial version. It can have uh, both forum and the email mail list and uh, in the forum, when you post a new message, uh, you, your email could receive this message. And even so, you, you, can, you can reply to this forum message uh, through the email. I think it, they can um, more or less to, could work together as one. Yeah, absolutely. But to do that, we'd need to end of life the type of mailing list that we have right now, because it doesn't do that. It's just a mailing list. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't, that type of mailing list, I, I'm pretty sure doesn't integrate with forums. So we'd have to move over to a forum and then set up the, the mail like thing yep. where you can just reply via email, Thanks, which I, I have no issue with. I just think, I just think as a project, we need to, we need to pick one. I don't think, I don't think this is something that we're, uh, it's a good idea to have both. Because one thing I can think about, about to, to set up forum, because someone who even not join <laughs> or subscribe, subscribe this mail list, they can search in for the information provided forum mm -hmm. uh, on, uh, on any search engine. So they can, uh, uh, in case he can find, find out some interesting uh, topics through this forum, they can join, join our community through that. Yeah. yeah, forum searches are almost way, uh, they're always way better than searching the email archives because we have email oh. archives, but oh, you yeah. can search it and good luck finding what you are looking for because the search uh, is pretty terrible compared to the forums except um, for gmail honestly all email search is terrible <laughs> that's true right. let me um, let me um talk but i also i also think this is a good time to have this conversation again um in, in the chaos project because you know i mean in, i mean let's face it like you know the old school mailing lists are are 
kind of for us old people. And if we want to get some newer people into the project and some younger people into the project, um, I think- What are you saying? I think we should embrace some more modern technologies like forums, for example. Just saying. That's, yeah, I think that uh, I, I, I'm in favor of <laughs> I'm in favor of that, especially if I can subscribe with my email. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna subscribe via email. Don't don't get me wrong, because old people in email, but um, but yeah, I think you know I I think switching to some modern tools um will in the long run uh, probably help us as a project. All right, so I will, I'll bring this up to Kevin and see what our options are in WordPress for a forum. Cause I think he's gonna be piloting a few ideas. You know what I mean? To put in front of people. Um, and to your point, Don, we had this kind of, it was probably a couple of years ago that we had it. And I think the mail list was considerably more active back then. It was. We moved, moved a lot uh, that conversation to Slack. And so, I just, I think part of the reason we didn't move back then is we didn't want to disrupt the flow that was occurring on the email list. But at this point, I don't think it would really be that huge of a disruption. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you. Um, any thoughts on, from, from anybody on the call about even from a navigation perspective, not even from the forum perspective, but from a navigation perspective, having a specific kind of part or segment of the website being dedicated to the work that's occurring in Chinese in the chaos project, like links to just Chinese resources in terms of like meetups, in terms of the social channels, in terms of translated documents, you know, that would, or maybe that can be integrated into the knowledge base. I'm not entirely sure how that would, would work. Like if you had a knowledge base that had, um, Chinese documents, could you search that knowledge base in Chinese and find those documents? Because if that is possible, then then that would probably just work just as well. Yeah, we had some um, Chinese social uh, channels uh, in the participate page, um, but um, I'm not sure if we want to like put all the Chinese related information as uh, like the information of meetups and uh, the blogs that may, may could be published um, in Chinese and uh, like a Chinese site, a, a, por a portal for Chinese, for, for in Chinese, if that, I, I just, I, I'm not sure um, which, um, where is more appropriate to put, 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 put that um, under maybe the community, maybe maybe we create a new page under under the community navigation. Um, That's kind of what I was thinking. At least take a look at what that would look like—a navigation page or a portal. Because right now, all of the Chinese we have links to all of the the work that's being done in Chinese, but it is it's in the participate page, it's on the metrics page. It's on the um, like the events tab, like the, the, the spots, they're all kind of all over the place and they are there for sure, but they just don't seem to be organized real well. You kind of have to go through the English portals to get to the Chinese information. Seems a little Is weird. it possible to like, um, like the international version of the website i'm not sure if this is too heavy just like uh like kiosk community slash chinese community and there is a whole new portal but i, I think it, it might be a bit heavy um at this phase yeah i'm not sure how that works i have this like wonderful hope that you could just like push a giant translate button and it would translate the entire page <laughs> but i'm afraid that's not how it works <laughs> so it's triggered me thinking about uh, we have some concrete uh, moving forward things to do so because when we're talking about to redesign the whole page i mean the web site it's kind of complicated things how, how can how do we plan to do it do we have a working group or, or, or the people already in that? Uh, yeah, I mean, so Kevin Kevin Lombard, who has who has done website design work and website development work in a prior uh, prior life, um, and who currently manages our website at the moment, is going to be taking on this 
um, in the summer uh, as, uh -huh. a, as a dedicated <clears throat> project. So the spring is really set up to kind of organize thoughts like in conversations that we're having here mm -hmm. and that we can start documenting um, ways forward. So the work would really begin in May and June, like at the beginning of summer. Um, so wow. we did open up the Slack channel. There's a Slack channel for website. It's website working group or working group website. I kind of forget the order. Um, and we were going to try to do a lot of the work asynchronously, at least for a little while. And then as needed, we were going to have updates about the work in the common working group. It's not that we would have the discussions necessarily there about the strategy, but updates would occur there and like feedback could be provided. Like that's a terrible idea or that's a really good idea kind of thing. Okay, good. Because because I th I'm thinking of uh, if we need more people or more contributor on this work, maybe we can use some uh, Google Summer of Code, something like that. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. We're, we're submitting Google a Google Summer of Code to help with the uh, as a potential project to help with the knowledge base creation because that seems like it's going to be the most complicated part mm -hmm. of this redesign. Yeah, uh, and we've also we've been working with um, some community members, and we may even hire a graphic designer to help think about just the overall aesthetics, the look of the site, as well. Yeah, that's great. All right, great. This is helpful. Thank you, everybody. Um, I know that Georg will be happy to go back to the mail list forum discussion. I think this is so that's that's a good thing. Um, all right. Any other comments on the website? I thought I'd bring that to your attention. I think that's a pretty big deal. Yeah, it is. All right. Um, we just so you know, too, we're working on chaos brand guidelines. We're working with uh, Nicole Huseman, who is one of the co directors of the board right now um, on brand guidelines. We're working with uh, Enoch, uh, a community member who is helping with kind of some of the redesigns of the banners for um, things like blogs and Twitter and YouTube. So I may want to, you know, bring some of that work here to this, this, um, this community as well, or this, this working group as well, because if we need to make some updates to the brand guidelines that could help again. Actually, I, I saw out. that, by, I, I saw yeah. that by banner design results on, on, yeah. on the, in the community meeting hmm. uh, yeah. on, on that documentation. It's really good. It's really nice. Yeah. yeah did I, a really I good mean, job. <laughs> it's, uh, did, did, uh, have it done right now? It's it's already there. We can re, we can reuse it uh, on our you know in the uh, China some I think, uh, forum. Yeah, I think uh, Enoch's doing just a tiny bit more work on it from an mm -hmm. image perspective. So maybe give it a week or so. Oh. so okay, yeah, that's you did a really good job. Yeah, so we'll we'll collect all of this work and make it available on the website now and as the website is redesigned kind of under our, our media page or brand guidelines page. Mm -hmm. I think it, because Xiaoya are organized in the China chaos cast. So they have, uh, we, uh, we have our own some kind of web page. We can use this banner to add on it. It's really good to, to show that. Perfect, great. Uh, all right, cool. Um, any other comments on the brand guidelines? Like I said, just give us maybe a week or so, and we should have that probably sorted out and made available to everybody. Um, and, and we can work with Enoch too, I guess, one last comment on that. If there needs to be um, text, Chinese text added to some of the banners, we can work with Enoch to provide that okay. as well. Uh, how, can we, how, can, how can we communicate with him? Uh, He's on Slack. Yeah, he's on Slack. Yeah, yeah, he's very active on Slack, um, and I've, I've, yeah, he'll message back on Slack pretty fast. Great, great. Uh -huh. Also on the web website, that 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 channel. Um, we... It's like it's like WG website. Uh huh. Okay, I find that. Yep. Okay.
So that's the drawing. Cool. All right. Um, just a note that we're planning ChaosCon in Europe associated with uh, Open Source Summit Europe in Dublin sometime in October, I think. It's just more uh, for your information. Uh, in, in Dublin? Oh, I think okay. it's in Dublin, isn't it? Oh, I, have two, I have two friends in Dublin wow. who, who are working in Ericsson and uh, mm. we, we are working for a year together. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, well, Dublin has a lot of uh, foreign manufacturing for a lot of companies. Company. That's their big and thing. The people, and, and people in there loving drink, drinking beers. <laughs> that is a stereotype <laughs> of the Irish, indeed, yes. Yeah. Do, do we have an online wiki? Do we have what? I'm sorry. Wiki? Uh, online. Online wiki. We don't have a wiki. Mm-mm. Uh, no, I mean, June, not not, uh, not mean, working. I mean, on, online, online meeting, right? Online meeting, yes. Oh, associated oh. with OSS Summit or to chaos con? To coordinate chaos con. Uh, maybe she means the Europe meeting, uh, chaos cons Europe. Yeah, we don't have a meeting yet. It just it. We're starting to plan. We're starting to plan. It really came up in yesterday's community call. Okay. And so we're trying to get space there right now. Uh -huh. and... So there, there's no online meeting in that meeting? Okay. Not at the moment. We oh, usually okay. do most of the planning for it in Slack and in the project meetings, which I know the weekly project meetings on Tuesdays, which I know are not at a great time for you all. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. It's much later, like three hours later it starts. But if some of you are interested in helping with planning, um, we can we can always change that and try to do more of it asynchronously in Slack or somewhere else. Um, so we're we're certainly open to changing it for sure. I'm hoping COVID-19 is disappeared this years later so we can travel to Europe or, or to the US, US. Yeah. Some kind of. And June, if you were asking if there will be a virtual component to the chaos con, I imagine there probably will be, although we haven't formalized anything, but I imagine there will be. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah, we've streamed the last couple of them, I want to, th I think. I know the last one we did. Mm -hmm. When was the one before that? No, I don't remember. Did we try a virtual one? I don't remember. I don't remember either. <laughs> I know we streamed the last one, but that's the that's the only one that had both streaming and face to face that I remember. But yeah, um, for, for for me, virtual meeting is good, is great, but uh, I I still pray for offline meeting. I mean the face to face, the magic device. I have high hopes for Dublin. All right, um, Sean, do you want to talk a little bit about the software? community development work that you're doing? Yeah, so the the chaos project has, as you know, two software groups or pieces that are working actively in it, Grimoire Lab and Augur. And Grimoire Lab folks and the Augur folks are talking about how we can work together in the, in the general interest of chaos and metrics uh, so that we can bring on more developers into each project and onboard developers, I think, uh, Daniel and I, Daniel and I have talked and I think we agree that if we can find ways of onboarding people who do software development into the project generally, that that would be a benefit for, for everything. And uh, I, I have no religion about Augur versus Grimoire Lab other than I'm a maintainer for Augur. And I think our goal is principally to, to do some of the workshops like I was doing for Augur a year ago um, or into, I guess, through last summer, and maybe a bit in the fall, and and have some some of those be more general. Um, so it wouldn't just be Augur, but we would do perhaps workshops on Augur and Grimoire Lab. And so we're just starting that discussion, um, continuing it again on this Friday. And so um, you, I think you'll be hearing more about that. We don't have any solutions yet, but I think we have goals. 
Uh, I don't know if you, I, I, I'm sure that you know that the the grim uh beat beater they have a coaching something like uh uh sorry site uh, yes uh, you know it's a it's a it's a it's great website to to provide such services to 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 let you to insight the your own project I yes. think if our our chaos community could if we could provide a uh. I mean the uniform, the one to to provide such services, that would be great. And I, I do think I do think people are able to get a lot of what they need on a small number of repos from Cauldron. I think I think Daniel and I would probably agree that if mm -hmm. you're doing an enterprise level analysis, for example, if you're in an OSPO with a thousand repos, that Cauldron would not be sufficient for something like that. So exactly. I think I think Cauldron is excellent for giving you a I would call it a taste of what uh, what the chaos metrics can provide you for your repo, mm -hmm. but it does, it's I don't think it's intended to scale, um, and that's that's where Baturgia and Grimoire Lab can come in, and and that's some of what Augur does focus on as well, and and so we just want to make things easier for the community to get that starting spot. And maybe have a, you know, the ultimate goal would be to have a place where somebody could start and actually do collection at scale for their project at, at some level of scale so they can start to do some comparisons. Yeah, and I think the other bit that's missing out of Cauldron is the ability to um, clean some of the data. Like, for example, you have a contributor that you know uses two different email addresses, but it's the same person. So I don't think in Cauldron you can you can merge those or update things like organizational affiliation. So I think the the data cleaning is um, is lacking, which again is something that uh, companies sorting. Need. and sorting and sorting hat does a good job of that and. Augur has ever evolving features in that general direction. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think that's important. And yeah, because I, I'm, 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 I'm thinking, I remember that the topic we are talking about, uh, we are talking, we are discussed in the metrics model meeting and uh, Elizabeth pop up the tool, toolkit, the things to, to provide support, to describe how to implement the whole metrics model. I think we can use something like this to uh, provide our, uh, I mean, the uh, uh, implementation support on the metrics and the metrics model. Mm -hmm. And that would be great. Yeah, but getting back to yeah. your point, because um, I, I think your, your question was really, you know, could the community provide a service that's similar to Cauldron for some of the other services? Um, and I, I would love to see us do that because it would be really interesting if people could just sort of get a taste of, of mm -hmm. Augur in the same way that right. they can use Cauldron right. to get a taste of how Grimoire Labs works. Yeah. Um, I know, yeah. I know, Sean, that that's yeah, easier it's, said than done. It's, I mean, it, it it's, nice. it's, it's on our, it is on our roadmap and I do have a developer working. Essentially, we just need access and authentic access and entitlements um, capabilities you know, which is very basic in many systems so that you can log in, create an account on a Augur server and only have access to those repositories that you care about um, and sort of remain unaware that other people have their repositories in there as well. Um, and so that's, that's kind of the direction Augur is heading. Um, but we want to, to the the larger point is that we want the software community to be uh, so getting people that quick access. I think that's important. I think also helping to onboard developers into the community is important for the sustainability of both Grimoire Lab and Augur. And mm -hmm. so as a community, I would say in the last six months, especially we are seeing, I'm seeing more and more that people come to the community looking to actually see data about the repositories they care about. I'm getting a lot more questions about how do I see this in action? And, and I'm seeing those in the general chaos threads for people who are new to the project more so than I have in the past. And I don't know if that's anyone else is seeing that or if I'm just, you know, looking at the word world through software colored glasses. 
No, I've certainly seen a lot of questions from newcomers about the software recently, for sure. So what's the start point? I quickly want to ask this question. How could we working on that together? I mean, you I think Augur and Gumle. So the, the starting point right now is there is a meeting at, it would be 10 a.m. our time. So it would be your Friday night, very late. It's two, it'll be two hours later than this call starts. Um, a that's, discussion. That, I, I mean, that's quite important. And uh, I'm very interested on that. I I'd think, be, in the, yeah. I'd be happy to invite you to that. Yeah, please, please do so. I, I, I would like to join that. I think um, um, my, my, my friends would also have some kind of interest on that. Okay. Um, Yuhui, can you just drop your email in the chat so I get it right? Not that I don't have emails from you, but sometimes I will. Sometimes my email search is not so good. Going back to another discussion. Thank you. Yep, I got the same date. Thank you. Okay. Uh, well, I'm just going to say, uh, as we move through this agenda, thank you for everybody. We talked about the website, and there's an interest in participating in in that from, from people on the call, the brand guidelines, same, Cascon Europe, same, and software development, same. So thank you for... <laughs> uh you know wanting to participate in all of these things so i'm glad we're talking through these this is great um just to did anybody have any last comments on the software community development work it's really good on that uh all right the maybe the last thing for 2022 i mean i know there are smaller things but we're really working this year on on metrics models and the deployment of metrics models a lot of you are probably pretty familiar with this um, just because you're on the metrics model calls as well. Um, but just so so you all know, we're kind of looking at this from two angles right now. So one is the metric model, which is a way to um, bring together the smaller atomic chaos metrics in ways that are more meaningful than the single metric alone. Um, but then we're also looking at adding a toolkit component to the model, which is how to actually deploy the metrics model. So if it's a metrics model that is based on, say, qualitative data, that's a toolkit about how you might do surveys or how you might do interviews to collect such data. Uh, and if it's a tool or if it's a metrics model that's more based on quantitative information, it's how you might actually deploy a Jupyter notebook. Uh, to actually collect this data, for example, in Augur. So really kind of helping people think through technically how they would actually deploy this model. So that's kind of where we're at right now. I don't know if people have comments on, on that as well, but I'm pretty happy about how this is working. Um, just in terms of, so also maybe people know the metrics models right now, we're not looking at using the same release process as we do for metrics themselves. So metrics, as you all know, they go through a pretty extensive conversation within the working groups. We then have a freeze. We then go through a 30 day review period. The idea is the metrics models would be released a little bit more quickly than that, that we would talk about them in the metrics model working group, bring them to the community call. Um, and then really just kind of from that point release them unless anybody has any real problems uh, with the model itself. So it'd be a shorter turnaround. Uh, and we're also looking at, at making the metrics models a little bit more visually appealing than the metrics themselves. So probably using some design components, um, like graphic design components that as the models could be an artifact that's shared a little bit more um a little bit more often than maybe a single metric alone okay so so how do we really so how do we uh, to show that our uh, our working result of this metrics model we have discussion on the on the meeting and we have it on the metrics model uh, google doc and uh, how do we store that on the website or, or to let more people join that on the, to use that? Yeah, I'm not, that's a good question. So obviously the model itself is fairly easy to put on the website because that's just a PDF. The toolkit is also pretty easy to put on the website because that's just a kind of a verbal guide. 
um, but how I actually to show the deployment of the model, uh, that's, I'm not the, sure how to cross that gap quite yet. The, I mean, one possibility is Ragava and uh, Ragava, your student has started using a hosted, and I think Vinod is as well, a hosted version, version of Jupyter notebooks. I mean, they're not, that wouldn't be necessarily pretty, but it might be a way to begin sharing um, metric models publicly. Mm -hmm. And also maybe we can use the Bob to topic about uh, we, we, we provide some kind of service uh, to, to show that uh, how to use this matrix model quickly when, you, when you're using this service, something like Kotlin or we provide similar to the Kotlin mm -hmm. solution. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I, I think um, that's probably a good topic for the discussion in that software meeting because- that's what we, I just put, yeah, yeah. I agree. That so seems for, like that's where the link is. Yeah, that's, that's um, mm. because right now we've built metrics models, uh, Ragava, Matt Student and I, using Jupyter Notebooks against Augur data. And one of the hopes I think for the discussion is to figure out, okay, how do we, what, are, what is the pathway to have folks help us build metric models that we can make available publicly with Grimoire Lab as well? Um, so, and to try to do that without placing additional stress on the existing Grimoire Lab developers who are quite busy. So that's where I think onboarding new developers becomes a shared shared concern for the, for the community. Mm -hmm. yeah. these, these metric models, I think, are really motivating that. and. I don't want to build all of them in Augur and not have any in Grimoire Lab. I don't think that's that's as helpful. Mm -hmm. No, that's great. All right. If we if we provided uh, a service uh, such as uh, Cauldron, um, um, who will provide it? Provide uh, the uh, infrastructure for something like Cauldron, maybe who will provide the cloud serv service? Um, well, to quote an American um, meme, I've always relied on the kindness of strangers. And um, we're, we, we are, I think, collectively working to, like, I think, possibly get some Azure credits to do something like that. And so I think, I think there are ways and there are, there are some companies who I think could possibly help us with uh, some infrastructure, but we haven't really come up with a concrete ask for that yet, other than the Azure credits. So I think, I think we could, we pass, we, we might possibly be able to, to use Azure to start hosting something like Cauldron on, I guess if maybe you'd call it metric models, infrastructure of some kind. I do think this point, I'm sorry, June, go ahead. Oh, you, you go ahead. Okay. I think this point is really important that June brings up because- Oh yeah, oh yeah. This is, this is a question that we um, constantly struggle with in the chaos project, right? So there's there's people in the community and we can provide metrics, right? We can provide that work and then we can provide metrics models and then we can provide the deployment of those metrics models. And then we could provide consulting services around those metrics. Like how far out can we go before we just stress the community and really can't provide the service into the long run? Like, I don't I think we need to be careful not to provide a service that we can only support for six months or three months or something like that it has to be sustainable for the for the long run without stressing right. ourselves out right but i completely i completely agree yeah because i i tried the um cardio i i find uh, it have to pay for more more metric in card and, and that, pay many months yeah, I mean, I think that's um, part of, I mean, obviously, Baturgy is a company that, you know, manages Grimoire Lab and makes significant contributions to inner source and open source. 
so they, I mean, it's reasonable that they have to at some point ask for money for their services. Um, I don't know where, I don't know where the, I haven't used Cauldron enough to know where that threshold is, like what, what's free and what's not. But I mean, I think that does tie back to basically the infrastructure question. Um, you know, having a sustainable infrastructure will help help the entire project, both Grimoire Lab, Augur, Chaos, the whole, and the metrics models. I mean, I think all of it is kind of twisting together in a, in a very important way, right, at this point. And I think too, for Cauldron, I'm pretty sure that Baturgy is paying for the, the hosting and the costs associated with, yes. with that service. So I think it's yes. important to recognize that that's not a chaos project service. That's something that um, Baturgia is doing uh, and it benefits the chaos project. But I, I think that that's being, the costs are being borne by the company yes. and not the project. I, I absolutely believe that as well. Yeah, the project itself doesn't really have a ton of cash. No, I mean, the most, I mean, to get into this, like the most sensible thing is, is I mean, there are organizations that do support the work that we're doing in the chaos project. So uh, the Sloan Foundation, the Ford Foundation was, I mean, there are organizations that have provided the support, but those are not really long term paths to sustainability. So, I mean, it's something we could think about in the next I do know that a lot of the big cloud providers will occasionally provide what they call cloud credits mm -hmm. to projects. Yeah. So it's possible that we could get some some cloud credits to host some of this stuff. And that's, that's but they can exactly. always They can always take those away too, because I think recently one of the big companies took them away from a project or stopped providing them. I don't remember the details. Yeah, I, I know that... Um, We've requested Azure credits specifically to do some of this metric model um, availability work. And, and what we don't know is like how long those will last. Cause I've had lots of Amazon credits in the past myself and lost them. And once you lose them, then you're like, where do I go for my infrastructure? Um, Maybe personally, I'm sitting in a basement rocking five servers that are old versions of different computers. They're not like good, but. Maybe instead of uh, instead of uh, uh, create a new service like Cauldron, maybe we could just uh, do some video um, to show our yeah. metric model in in yes. our PC. great idea. That is a good idea. That would that would give people a idea what the metric model is and how it's helpful until we have some kind of more infrastructure stable solution. Yeah. Okay, that's a good idea. All right, um, just in the few remaining minutes, I think I'd like to just point out that we're coming up on a metrics freeze I think it's, I don't know, maybe this week. I think March it's, 1st, it's, I think it's Tuesday. So a lot of the working groups, there's not a lot of new metrics in this round. This is traditionally a lighter round for metrics release, but just FYI, there will be issues probably showing up in the translations repo this week, you know, in the next seven days or so. And this is just to this list here is just kind of I don't think these have shown up yet, but just to give you an, a sample of a few of the metrics that may be showing up. So um, any support in that regard is always appreciated. Uh, actually, I add this metrics freeze because I I I, I found the mail sent by Elite Base about the this metrics freeze news, and uh, because the first the two uh, the first. Uh, the first three metrics and metrics model is provided through Asia Pacific team, uh, and uh, I'm I'm thinking how how could we create this pull request to to the GitHub or could we directly do that or we have to communicate with the related related working group like a conversion rate is related to the evolution? Do we have to talking with uh, uh, 
working this working group uh, people before we create creating a new pull request? I think some of them. So the contributor net recommendability um, is this a value working group? Uh, yes, and uh, in yep, yeah, this discrete. So, uh, Vinod is taking that on, so he'll get this created as a pull request because I think this is done. I think project engagement is. Do you remember Yehui, where this was located? Uh, I think it's related to the activity, and um, and I think uh, you mentioned before that we uh, you, you discussed in the value group, uh, and uh, we moved it to the metrics model for that. Okay. So. Okay. So right now. I think we can put we meaning like me and Sean and Elizabeth, like we can um, kind of put the call out to the different working groups to really make sure that if they have any specific metrics that are coming out of the working groups to get those finalized as a pull request for the English version, but also then follow the process to get this into the translations, for example, these. Like in DEI, these will be done this week. But in terms okay. of, um, so don't worry about that. We can, we can take care of that. Um, in terms of translating, were you also asking about translating the metrics models that are being released? Mm, no, I don't think not they... so much. Okay. No, no. Okay. So just. Um, I just think I think it'll be okay. I think we can reach out to the groups to ensure that the PRs are done this week, um, and that they will post the proper issue in the translations group to ping the work that needs to be done around translations. Yeah, uh, I mean the first two. I, I mean the uh, conversion rate and the contributor might recommendability. Uh, do we need uh, need to create Pull request by our own. No. For now? No. no. Okay. I think we should be okay. I'll double check on this though. So like I'm I'm hesitant to answer yes or no. <laughs> I'm answering yeah. no because I think we can take care of it. But um let me now that I have these in this list, let me double check with the working groups to see where these are at, as opposed to just checking right now. Yeah. And then I can ping you asynchronously on Slack if something needs to change. But I, I think okay. these should be taken yeah. care of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Thank I know Vinod is releasing some things. So, and I'll also just check where all of these are at in their different working groups, and I'll do that right after this meeting. And then I'll. How many ping. metrics are we are going to release in it this? It sounds phase? like it's about one or two per working group, so it would be okay. eight to not ten. Not that much. Not no, not, not that, that much. Yeah, like I said, this is for some reason this the spring release is always lighter. Than oh, okay. In the fall release that's just the way it is yeah uh -huh. okay. So, okay well we are at the end of our time uh honestly again thank you so much i mean look oh. at yeah <laughs> this great. Is really wonderful great discussion thank, thank you. you and thank you thank for, you so much. for all of your engagement and all of your thoughts um till till i see you all again or until two weeks when we see you on this call all right bye everybody thanks everybody bye thank you take care bye